Boy oh boy was this a tough one to watch. For today's video we're going to be checking in with none other than Christia Freeland as she was in Winnipeg having a press conference and the only one question she got from a CBC reporter who I will give credit to did a pretty decent job short circuited her brain and uh, this is how it started off. And you can also ask my colleagues who are here questions too. I don't want to be greedy. That's fine. Partly give us CBC. Uh, what do you say to the various the premiers as well as a uh, majority of Canadians, according to a poll, who don't want to see the carbon tax increase on April 1st? Um, yeah, thank you for the question. And here's what I'd like to say. I think we all agree that pollution is expensive and polluting shouldn't be free. I think it's also really, really important to underline the facts. And the facts are that eight out of 10 families in provinces that have a backstop on the price on pollution get back more than they pay in. A Manitoba family of four is gonna get 1,200 bucks this year. That is meaningful support. You asked about the premiers, and what I'd like to say to the premiers is, you know, yesterday I was in BC. Um, BC has its own provincial price on pollution. It's a system that was put in place by a center-right government in 2008. It is robust. It has support of the people of BC. Quebec also has its own system. And for premiers who are, have, uh, questions around the federal backstop, I'd like to invite them, as the Prime Minister has, to work on their own provincial system. We're happy to work with them if that's a path that they would prefer. Now there's two things that I want to touch upon on that clip, where she talked about working with the other premiers and provinces if that's what they wish, which they've openly expressed that that's what they want. Scott Moe we had yesterday on where he was in the committee talking about this and other alternatives outside of the carbon tax. But then she also talked about before that the federal backstop, the carbon tax again, how people are going to be getting more in their rebate. Right after Scott Moe yesterday in the committee, they had the parliamentary budget officer return again for the second or third time. The guy's been on CBC, He's he's been all over expressing, I think he was also on CTV, he was expressing the complete opposite. He says, if we're only looking at the fiscal, yes, 8 out of 10. If we're adding the economic and fiscal, no, they don't. Yet, the liberals, especially uh, Freeland and Trudeau, want to keep peddling this. But in regards to working with the other provinces, today... We had uh, Premier Blaine Higgs from New Brunswick, as well as Premier Danielle Smith from Alberta at the committee hearing. And while Premier Higgs was trying to present alternatives to what uh, New Brunswick and across Canada could be doing, uh, the Liberals were point of ordering him. Uh, the chair was getting fed up, basically shut him down. And, and this is what Higgs had to say. To uh, mostly um, in relation to the Premier's um the Prime Minister's comments here just recently about give us a solution. You know, we're, we're open to solutions. And so what we're seeing as an opportunity here in New Brunswick is exactly what's happening in, in, uh, in the West in, in relation to the development of LNG and the, the shipment of LNG worldwide and the shutdown of coal plants. Now, we have the, the Prime Minister stated there's no business case in New Brunswick. That is, that's absolutely not true. The situation is we have a business case. We don't have a gas supply currently, and that is the issue, the gas supply. Now, is it economical to bring it from the West or bring it from the US? Um, no, it hasn't proven to be based on the cost of transportation, but it is economical to develop our very own resource here in New Brunswick. It's economical to the point that we have 77 trillion standard cubic feet here in our province. And with a consolidated effort from the federal government and the First Nations, we can deal with not only having an impact around the world by shutting down coal plants, coal plants that are being built at record numbers in China, 80 to 100 a year, uh, coal plants that exist in Europe at 174 that range. Coal plants that even in the Atlantic Canada that are running, four of them, that could be shut down. 
and 50% reduction when you do that. So my plea here is across party lines to say, let's think bigger. Let's look at Canada as a solution to world environmental impact and changes Point in Point of order, Chair. As opposed to Point us being exactly focused on our internal affordability and the cost every day of Point living. Of order. I, I apologize, province. Premier Higgs. I just have a point of order. Mr. Long, please make uh, a brief. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I'm just, again, Chair, I, I'm confused on, on relevance. Um, this Again, is an, op uh, an opening statement, Mr. Long. Please show respect chair, for the chair, Premier. You may have a disagreements with us, but please show respect for the Premier of your province. Sure, Chair. I, I it's an opening statement. Let him finish this. But again, I'm, I'm just wondering the relevance, and I'm also wondering, Chair, if you can explain again which of the vot votable, items, vot votable items referred to in the committee contains the Canada okay. carbon rebate. I'm, I'm confused. You able to uh, let us know that? We've explained that yesterday, Mr. Long. Mr. Premier Higgs, go ahead. That's not a point of order. Mr. Higgs, go ahead, Thank sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh now, if you find that kind of thing infuriating, you should have watched the past two days of committee hearings with these premiers showing up because the Liberals literally point of ordered from the start of the committee before anybody even said anything to shut down these meetings. And I might do that in another video. But let's get back to Freeland now for a bit. And the final thing I want to say about a price on pollution is, you know, this is about doing the right thing for the environment, for sure. But having a climate plan is also essential in 2024 to having an economic plan. The only way that Canada can build an economy with good jobs is if one of its foundations is a strong environmental plan. If we don't have an environmental plan, people are just not going to buy the stuff that we build and sell them. So we need to recognize that it is not an option to not have an environmental plan. And one of the things that is really, really a threat for Canada is we have the Conservatives out there criticizing the price on pollution without offering any climate plan of their own. That, to not have a climate plan, is a disaster for Canada's economy. And I've been talking today about young Canadians because I think we all know we need to be sure the promise of Canada is open to them. It's also incredibly unfair of us today um, when we think about the younger generation. And this isn't my follow-up, but could you please answer? <laughs> but it is? No, it's not. Please okay. answer also en français, s'il vous plaît. You are totally right. That is not a follow-up. Et avec plaisir. Alors... My goodness, it is just brutal and cringy to listen to this woman talk. It's like nails on a chalkboard. Here she is saying that it's a threat to Canada that conservatives are criticizing the carbon tax. Yet 70% of the population is doing that of Canada, as well as 7 out of 10 premiers. So does that mean we're all threats to Canada because we have this view on the carbon tax? Like, does she not think about what she says? And then she tries to spin that Canada won't be getting outside business because we don't have a carbon plan. When the Bank of Canada just came out the uh, earlier this week talking about the problem with Canada is we're not productive. We have low productivity. That's our problem in terms of business. We're falling behind everybody because we're not producing enough, not because of the carbon tax. But when the CBC reporter uh, f gives a follow-up question Listen to her just, again, short circuit. She just can't think. There's long pauses. It, like You can think of a loading wheel just on her forehead the whole time <laughs> in this clip. This is my actual follow-up. Um, the, given the fact that you and your colleagues have for a long time been touting the rebate, but increasingly Canadians don't seem to either believe it or buy it, um, 
how do you expect, and you have also as a government watered down the tax by exempting some fuels, creating what is a different playing field in different parts of the country. Pardon the preamble. How will you market this effectively? How will you convince Canadians who are increasingly not buying into it without, how, how will you convince Canadians that this carbon tax is still an effective environmental tool, let alone a political tool? Um, look, thank you for the question. Um, and I do want to just respond a little bit to the preamble, just to say in all of the backstop provinces, exactly the same system and the same rules apply. And that is a very important national principle. Um, you know, when it comes to the views of Canadians, I think what's important is for us as a government um, to, first of all, um, be clear about the rebate and the significant value it delivers to Canadian families, to be clear about the reality that the price on pollution is entirely revenue neutral. None of the money collected stays with the federal government. It all goes back to Canadians. That's how the system was designed, and, and it's designed that way on purpose. And then, you know, from my perspective, the really important thing is to talk about how essential it is today more than ever, and it becomes more true every single day, for our economic plan and our climate plan to work together. And, you know, I truly, truly believe there is no way to build a 21st century economy in a trading nation like Canada without having a climate plan. Other countries simply will not buy what we produce unless we are producing it with clean energy, unless we are producing the things we export, the things that we have really, really good jobs producing and selling to the world as part of a comprehensive economic and environmental strategy. Question, question, question. C'est ça? All right. Okay. Back to wow. today's press conference. This lady has lied so much to the Canadian public that she stood there for around eight to ten seconds just trying to come up with even more lies to tell us. It was as if dial up was, was happening again. That's all I could hear while I was looking at this clip. To The views. And after that, she just rambled and rambled till she got to the end where she was so ecstatic that there was no more questions after that. Because this woman is terrible at her job. Every time she opens up her mouth, we know that she's just feeding us more and more lies. She needs to get out of here. But as always, this is just my opinion. I'd love to hear from you guys. So let me know in the comment section below what you think about this. Uh, I hope you all have a fantastic long weekend. If you are celebrating Easter, happy Easter. If you're not, just enjoy the weekend off. I typically don't make videos on the weekend, so I will see you guys either Monday or Tuesday. And uh, don't forget to hit the subscribe button to keep up to date, as well as the bell notification. And I will catch you guys on the next one. Thanks so much.